Standalone clinics for cancer have increasing drug costs and decreasing reimbursement for this. We have to have a significant infrastructure to be able to safely get the chemotherapy out of the little bottles and put it safely into a patient. We did an experiment in our office. We looked at how much does it cost me in terms of pharmacy infrastructure, having the right refrigerators, having all the right uh, regulatory concerns met, having the appropriate personnel, pharmacists and oncology nurses, and how much does it cost to get the patient, uh, get the drugs out of the little bottles and into the patient safely, and it, Medicare pays about 40% of that cost. So the main threat to community oncology is that we have to safely deliver expensive chemotherapy drugs and we are not paid sufficiently to actually administer those drugs. Medicare assumes that the drug, quote, margin, the ASP plus 4.3%, is actually profit. It is not. It does not even make up the shortfall in what Medicare pays us to deliver those drugs in a safe environment to our patients. We need to have realistic pricing if community oncology is going to continue to do well. There is also no reason why hospitals can get 340B pricing so they can buy our most expensive supply at about 72 to 75% of what we buy it for and be paid more and be tax exempt in many instances. Uh, that's a difficult competition. We need to level that playing field. We need to allow physicians to be able to compete for patients on the basis of quality of care they give, the personal care that we give in terms of, of sort of customer service, and be able to compete not based on who signs your paycheck on the front. We really need to level that playing field and let community oncology compete in a fair field. If we do that, then I think patients will recognize that the value that they get from an independent practice is so much greater than the value that they get in a large vertically integrated institution that community oncology will do well.